This is when it get real. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 117. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building today. At day one, DFDO, reintroduce yourself to the audience, bro. Oh, man. What's going on, y'all? I'm solidified, Sai. Solidified. Not with the soul, but you know. But yeah. Bonds of Street. Alumni. B Street. One of those, one of those guys. Yeah. In case you're watching that on the E-Block Radio. Catch you watching on the E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock on the E-Block Radio Network. Size so one of those guys. Like I said, original day one. I don't remember life without knowing this guy. Um, sure. Since we already hit in the rundown, Tuesdays, GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock. Wednesdays, 216 to blend, 12 midnight, uh-huh. 8 a.m., 8 p.m. And then we go Friday, I say podcast, Radio Network at 10 a.m. The rest of the week is wide open, West Coast. What's happening? Now, Custom Hustle World on Instagram is Custom Hustle Co. On Twitter, we do custom jerseys, custom jackets. We do the sneakers. We have three versions of the sneakers are out. The CH3s are out now. The CH2s and the CH1s can still be purchased. So, uh-huh. you know get at me. Those are available in any color, whichever ones you need. Don't matter. We got them. Uh, jerseys, football, basketball, baseball, hockey. And now we have the soccer jerseys, too. So, you get at Ooh. me for those joints, too. Uh, the custom shorts, the sweatsuits, uh, the spring jackets. Uh, also, new, you know, we always knew on the joint case. Again, you're watching on the E-Block Radio Network. The flip-flops are now available. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the flip-flops are in, too. When I tell you, you I got own a outfit, grocery list, bro. <laughs> when I tell you I own an outfit, that's what I really mean. When I say I'm a full-time oh. hustler, I got everything but work in. That's what I really mean. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. Then we also go to uh, at H2H Cleaning on Instagram. That is my cleaning company at H2H Cleaning, roofing, plumbing, for HVAC cleanup, cleanouts, and remodeling. If you need it cut, you need it sliced, diced, however you need that situation done, you get with us at H2H Cleaning, and we will make all of that happen. You just tell us how we can help, because we're here to help. Man, <laughs> episode 117 <laughs> of the podcast, like I said from the beginning, this is my brother right here. Uh-huh, but for sure. we're going to bring him on and talk about this now. Underrated, most underrated. Give me, we're going to go through a list of back and forth yo yo situation and things that we believe are underrated. And any topic you want to touch on, if you think something is underrated, you go there. Sabi, we're going to start with you. Say less. All right. Well, for one, I think um, verbally taking advantage of being able to tell your loved one you love them while you're here and while they're here. I think that's a big underrated thing, especially with society today. And I think, you know, we should shed a little light on that. How do you feel about that? So, you know me, I'm very big on <clears throat> giving the flowers while you can smell them. Uh, okay. I hate you, you. I hate for you to steal my post that was on Instagram four years ago. Now you got this long caption with all these praying hands. And <laughs> we was the best of friends. You love me so much. Copy, but I never heard none of that. You never told me none of that. I never felt none of that. Yeah, we was cool, but I didn't know we was all that. Uh, my wife is not for the public. My wife is not to be DM'd and told how you felt about me and none of that. She don't want to hear sure. it. So, um, <laughs> I'm very big on just expressing that. You love somebody, ain't nothing wrong with you telling them you love them. This is my brother. I love him dearly, and I've never made him feel anything but that. And 100%. I've always been that way. Like, sometimes I just text people out of the blue. I love you. Damn, what's wrong, bro? Nothing ain't wrong. Something got to be wrong because I told you I love you. Like, right. that is something that's that... That's what I'm uh, saying. That's, that's, about, that's how society is today, bro. That's what I'm saying. It's like... I mean, that's the fucked up mentality that ain't nothing you could do about everybody, but you could do something about your own situation, about your own little squareness. If you get enough people who sending out the I love you's and saying it and verbalizing it and making you feel it, then it doesn't become weird because some people never saw love. Some people don't know what love is. Some people don't know what it looks like, smells like, sounds like, or feels like. So they don't understand when you're giving them that. Like they think that it has to be an ulterior motive or a hidden agenda. Or like something is in there that you just ain't really saying that you really want. And sure. that's the fucked up part about it. But that's just, you know, that should be something that's a second nature, common courtesy thing. If you love somebody, why not tell them you love them? That's right. And I, I think, like, <clears throat> Again, I go back to society because if you look at what's going on today, it's like masculinity. I don't want to like deep dive there, but it's like I'm going to take masculinity for uh, example. So it's like for some reason with a lot of the brothers, we don't like we see each other 
And you know, me and you, we always, all right, bro, love you, talk to you later, you know what I mean? Whatever. Some lambs and everything. Nowadays, it'd be hard for people to do that. And they'd be like, all right, man, I, I get you. I've experienced this where it'd be like that awkward silence before you leave. And then it's like, there's nothing to think about, bro. It's like, I love you. I need to let you know because we can go part ways and everything could be a dunion right afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's one thing for sure that, like, we got to strengthen today because it's like we don't really do that too much. For some reason, we feel soft. Like when we do that, it's like, all right, all right, bro, I'm, I'm gonna give it you later. See, the problem with that type of stuff be that be, that makes sense when you're young, when you caught up in the opinions of others. When you're a grown man, woman, however, like you shouldn't be too caught up in. I wonder what Sai gonna say if I tell somebody else I love him. But people right. still really care about that stuff. People real still still really feel like they're living for other people. And that's what the yeah. stuff that you do when you try to make those decisions when you just young, dumb, full of cum ages and you just don't know no better. But the last time we physically saw each other, Ramadan, when we got done offering, he was like, nah, man, it's going to be the first of many. And I told you, we don't know that. We might not never get yeah, this chance again. That. That's like, the RP EJ never knew the last time we made Salat was going to be the last time we made Salat. Yeah, the last yeah. time, the night before he died that I talked to him, that was going to be the last time I talked to him. Like, <laughs> Or we was texting. We didn't even talk. I text him because I'm like, if I call him, you're going to end up on the phone too late. I got to get up and go to Juma tomorrow. So you right. never know when them last opportunities is going to come. That's why you need to take full advantage of them while they're right there in your face. Um, right. So now, my most underrated is Jadakiss. Um, <laughs> Jadakiss is by far my most underrated because Kiss is top five dead or alive, like you always say. And you don't remember oh, that man. shitty Kiss verse. You don't remember that time and for the last when the locks came out, what like 95? You don't remember that time that you yeah. was like kids struggled on that, John. Now, obviously, some verses is just better than others because something has to be better. But right. you don't remember them joints where you was like, no, nah, kiss, this wasn't it, or you had a bad run where this album, this mixtapes just wasn't popping. That never happened with that boy. Right. Like, I ain't gonna hold you. I don't think I do remember any misses from Kiss for Real. Like any misses. And everything he got they, is almost notables and quotables. But then when they have the verses against Dipset, it was a couple years ago. How many niggas was talking about Dipset was gonna win? It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, they were high <laughs> on something. Nobody's like beating whatever's going out right now. Nobody's that. beating that ball. Like, I don't care who no. you got. I don't like when he took that freestyle. Ball. My bad, bro. I'm sorry. When he when he took that freestyle, like he took the whole show with that one freestyle, and to this day, I lie to you not. Like I just got finished the other day. Um, sometimes I try to search for little things to put with, you know, uh, the posting of you know the kicks and all. We'll get to that later. But I just yeah, happened to come across in the business. Go ahead now. <laughs> <laughs> I happened to come across the kiss verse, and I saw that John. I was like, yo, I ran that back at least four or five times, and I'm like, yo. He could have single-handedly killed the verses with that one joint, bro. That joint like, right there is, is in my Spotify. <laughs> Who shot you? He didn't have to go in his bag for nothing, though. That <laughs> one right there alone, he talked to them. He, like, literally talked to them. Mm. And it got quiet. It was crickets over there. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, when they put these lists together, like, I mean, I get it. Lists are made for you to talk about them, click them, and, you know, it creates a discussion. Copy. But what we have to right. stop doing on these different lists is disrespecting Jadakiss because... Kiss is yeah. definitely the most underrated ever. Like, because you yeah. shouldn't know by, I mean, music is subjective. So let's not, let me not broaden it to everybody. But it is. If you're of my generation, when you've been listening to JD Kiss for the past 30 some years, okay? Thank God. This boy has been ripping everything. You shouldn't have a top five that he ain't on. You right. shouldn't have a top three that he ain't on. <laughs> like, I gotta. I can't fully agree with that. I'm gonna tell you why. Kiss might be six for me. Maybe. Right. Who, who you got? One, two, three, four, five. This is top of your head. Obviously, right. we're not gonna hold so, you. To now that. we about to go somewhere else. All right. One, I'm gonna say big. Then I'm gonna say that big, that big in my five. I'm gonna say J. J is kind of like the Kobe Mike thing. If we gonna go there. Um, of course, I'm gonna give it the pop, but that's another conversation too. Because I feel like 
Pac was just rapping better. I don't think he was really uh, as much of the artist, much style wise. So um, I, the thing with Pac is 1995 me is never letting Pac fall off my list. But if we go and play song for if like you go and do a versus, Pac is not going to be able to hold a candle to Kiss because he got all the catalog in the world, but he's not going to be able to go with this ball. Tupac and Tupac <laughs> versus Biggie. Days, I, was, bro. I was riding with Pac versus Biggie every day, all day. But if we're being honest, Biggie's better than Pac. I can admit sure, that as an adult. But in 1995, I'm not telling you that. All right? <laughs> but once we start breaking these joints down and where we going, and again, you got to have it in the context of 93, 94, 95 for Pac. But Kiss has way too much in that catalog. Pac got a long ass catalog for him to only have them a couple of years on a run. But I guess so. I, I mean, got, I still have these, the guys, these guys are all still in my check. five, though. <laughs> these guys, yeah. this is my five. Them and Boar. Boar is my Boar is in my five. His oh, political. He, he's political, and up? I tell people <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? He's political, and I tell people that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now think about it. I don't know if I got Pac in, in, in uh I don't know if I got him in three for real. And I'm gonna tell you why. All right. We can't forget Nas. Nas got a different he's I he's one of the been a Nas guy. <laughs> me, me, me neither. Not not to the point where I can like um so this gonna make me sound hypocritical, but I don't care. Like Nas was great as a storyteller, and I feel like Nas fits in there where big and Jay is at. He was kind of like the catalyst, I'm going to say, so to speak, in between those two. I mean, the liaison. Let me not say catalyst. Wrong word. But he's like the liaison in between them two. Because it was like he had the storytellers, but then he had like a few like little witty things he would say here and there. And they'd be like, oh, all right. You know what I mean? A little catch, a little punchy joint. So, I mean, I don't know. But I definitely, I definitely got, got, nice. got big. You got you said Big J, Big J Pac, big Nas, J. and who? Give, who's your fifth? Can I take one back? Am I allowed to do that? Go ahead, you do whatever you want, brother. I'm thinking impact wise. Impact to me personally, I'm gonna say I got Big J, B, Kiss. I'm not mad at Mac. I got Mac in my top 10. But I, I'm not mad at somebody from here, especially people always say East Coast bias. You're damn right. Yeah. I, they yeah block the nigga East Coast on. Yeah, oh, they know. live right there. You know what I'm saying? Seen a nigga 35 years ago. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I remember seeing him myself like out here. So it's just yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, up there. That was definitely East Coast bias that took over. Um, come on, give me one more and we're moving on. All right. <laughs> You Jada Kiss. This is what he's trying. Jada no, I Kiss. Kiss. No, I, said, I put him at the B. <laughs> I said, I said Big J, right? Big J, Beans, Kiss. I'm gonna put Kiss over Bean. And you know, Nas a pot pick. Nas a pot pick one, and we are gonna move Pac. on. I'm gonna give it to Pot. Get Nas out of here. Copy that. As Nas wasn't in my five, that was about to be a whole other situation, but we want to stay on topic yeah, today. That's another now, show. <laughs> yeah, copy that. This is how you keep them coming back. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle Podcast with Hank. Um, give me your second joint. Right. Most underrated. Um, my second most underrated. Um, I'm gonna say being underrated. Being underrated um, is your second. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's fun for people to hype you up and support you and you know all the time but as an underdog like you're given a go ahead to like take the opportunity and prove daughters and they say it's wrong so it's like I feel like being underrated is underrated as well everybody want to be top dog and things like that and it's like I really like the fact of uh the thrill of the hustle I, I like the thrill of the you know the, the chase the I got to get it. Getting up every day, doing what I got to do. It's like, I got to get it. I got to get it. Being a, uh, what I call a gold digger. You feel me? Um, that goes along the lines of 
being underrated because you got so much weight to carry. You got so many people on the opposing side. And you also have the ones who act like they support you, but, you know, they they really don't. And that's so something else as well. But, yeah, be underrated. Here go the thing with this support word, and people always just get confused. You know me. I'm all about hustling. That's my whole situation, how to hustle enterprise. Damn, I forgot this one, too. The barber capes are also, oh, yeah, you already know. I had my joint, my joint white now, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah, my joint black. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How to hustle enterprise though? Are the barber capes. If you cut or do hair, we got the capes down at the barber shop too. You know what I'm saying? You get that? Me have whatever. Again, all these things, whatever colors you need, we got you. Um, That's different, bro. That's super different. Yeah, very, very, very ingenuitive. Marketing and promotion, baby. Shout out to Tachi. He came up with the idea though. Um, support. People always will throw out support. Support does not mean that a nigga came to me and got twelve sweatsuits. Support is you got these wristbands on your arm. Support is you like the they post. Yeah. Support is you like the post. Support is you shared the post. Support is you posted something. Support is not always about monetary uh, gain because everybody don't have the money. Everybody's situation is different. Sometimes a right. nigga can't support financially, but that don't mean he can't like a picture. So right. people always just say, if basically, if like if I ain't spending no money with you, then I ain't supporting your situation, which is just goofy. But that's the immature way to look at this shit because there's a thought I had to post about is a thousand ways for you to support somebody's situation without spending a dime. It's free to like the picture. It's free to tell somebody when they ask you, yo, you know, somebody who got that, 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 yo, you know, somebody who can cut grass, you know, somebody who can clean floors, you know, like when somebody asks you that support is, yeah, my man do that. That's that word of mouth that push is worth more than sometime you moving one extra piece of whatever it is that you're doing for whatever business it is that you got but like right. people always go straight to support spend money it's not always support spend money shit support might be that nigga posted you in a story every day this month you know what I'm saying yeah, right, because right. it took nothing right. for him to do that um, and that's promotion right there. So it's like you still helped out to work. Marketing and that's promotion cool. is how you're going to make any business work, bro. I don't care what you're doing. Sure. You got a restaurant, a hot dog stand, you got water ice on the block. You're without standing out there advertising, it ain't nobody going to never know. Which is why, like I said, you slap past the barbershop, hot hustle enterprise, capes got all the logos on them. <laughs> if you cut a dude, he got you. Um, my number two is Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem Olajuwon, Hakeem Olajuwon is my number two because there's not a thing this boy couldn't do on the court. <laughs> he had handle for a seven footer before seven footers all had handle. He could That's split a fact. double team. He can hit the J in the corner. He can pluck your point guard. He can come off the pick and roll. <laughs> he can come off. A and he got ball. shifty too for a big guy like that to get. And this he is gets all, shifty. This is, what I'm saying, and when they put these again, when these lists get put together, people don't have this ball high enough on these lists. Like niggas right. always talking about Mike would have won eight straight. Uh, I don't know if Mike's winning eight. Eight straight is hard to do, which is why nobody did it since Boston 1941. Like Luke oh, Longley, give us now. Let's go. <laughs> Luke Longley against that boy, I don't like it. Like, you know what I'm saying? They might not win, but it ain't going to be easy. Like, I don't like to get into the lands of the hypotheticals because, you know what I'm saying, if they can't get on the court, then we just talking semantics. We just talking about the way we feel about it. But when that right. boy was on the court, he watched them give David Robinson the trophy. He said he got my trophy and killed him. Shaq is my favorite ever. He murdered Shaq. All right? like, yeah, you definitely, you definitely been a Shaq fan since we kids. I remember you had the, uh, you remember that little job? Yeah, the Shaq like toys, yeah, he's banging yeah. on the court. I had the little, I had a bunch of them joints. I had the, I had the LSU one. I had the black Magic jersey one. I had the white For Magic sure. jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I sure. still my, my, he's my favorite ever. He's not the best ever, but he's my favorite. So nah, like, he's one of the best. He's one of the best too, though, because he was very dominant, like as a big guy. Um, and I put him. I'm not gonna put him in the same realm as Hakeem Olajuwon, but I would say that like, like they the goats, especially when I, I we talk to big men. Hawk and Shaq four and five on my overall players list, but Shaq is my favorite. He's not better than Hakeem Olajuwon. Like <laughs> same way, Tupac is yeah. my favorite. He ain't better than Big. Like I can be real about those situations. I'm a Cowboys right. fan. And Smith's not better than Barry Sanders. We're not gonna be biased. Uh, to this day, I still can't understand why. But all right, again, that's another show. You won three Super Bowls. You you won one. You went to one NFC Championship. But again, never uh, talk. About it. 
Um, do I this? can't lie, Jawan, you know? <laughs> And see, this is another thing too. Again, 1995. Uh, <laughs> this boy is fasting out here when I'm a yeah, kid. Yeah, let's talk about that. And he is killing niggas. So when I'm a kid watching this boy and I'm fasting, I mean, he's fasting. This is when Boar hits puberty and now Boar got to fast. So it's like, well, everybody else is fasting. It's time for you to start. So then when mm-hmm. I get to the age and stage of got to fast and we on the basketball team, well, Elijah Wan did it. So I can do it. Now, I was over Mary right. Anderson dying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't have the <laughs> and all like he had. But I tell you this, I didn't break my fast because right. this boy standard that no nah, you gonna be out here there's no excuses there's no oh i'm fasting so i can't do this that or whatever that set me up for the rest of my life to show me like if that boy gonna be out there playing 40 something minutes and ain't had a drop of water <laughs> all right he, he was I, going hard out there too getting 40 20 and 7 like <laughs> you know what's crazy people brought up how uh i think it was last year if i'm not mistaken around uh ramadan how Kyrie. Kyrie, yeah, how Kyrie was fast and all that. And the first thing I thought of was Hakeem Olajuwon. I'm like, how soon do we forget? Like, but yeah, no, it's good money see, that he's doing it, but... I mean, let me stop you right there. The different circumstances there is Olajuwon has been doing that for years. That was his that's first it. one. His that's being that's a, the point I was just going to reach. Yep. Yeah, it being your first one means you don't know what to expect that first day that you didn't hit hour 12 or whatever and you ain't had nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. we out here running up and down, and it's, it's a little different, your first joint. Now, we've yeah. been here a couple of years. I don't want to hear that from Kyrie now, this year or next year or none of that. But year one, I'll give you that. Hakeem was out there giving out all types of gun smoke and <laughs> dog water. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Plus, and people always act like he didn't make the finals in 86, too. But, um, you know what I'm saying? How about that? Yeah, how about that? Let's talk about that. Yes, yeah. I'm not one of them boys who just talk about this type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, sports was always the background. Now, number three for you, though. Where we at, number three? All right, so number three I have for being underrated is um, listening. Um, I feel like not only because, like, you're likely allowing somebody to, like, blow off steam or vent or, you know, get to the bottom of their stress, but you pleasantly get to play, uh, you know, like a silent shrink, a therapist, if you will. I feel like, you know, um, I, and I know for myself, like, it does me very, very good sometimes. I'm more of a listener. I can talk, but I, I'm more of a listener. You know what I mean? And especially if it's somebody I'm trying to build with, engage, it's a great thing for me to sit back and just listen to them and just hear them talk. Because then I get to dig in deeper than just your words. I get to hear exactly how you think, how you feel, your behaviors, your behavior pattern, and things like that. And I've always been into psychology. So for me, it's like um, a cognitive test, so to speak. But I think listening is very pertinent um, and as well as underrated, especially when you're dealing with, um, I'll just get to this real quick, but it's like, say, for instance, if you have an exchange with, let's say, I don't know, your significant other. If you're going back and forth and, Everybody's just talking and nobody is getting to the listening part. It's kind of just like, what are we doing? It's like a defeated purpose. However, on the other hand, if you got somebody that's just sitting there and, you know, you have one that's, that's uh, listening effectively, and then the other one is kind of like, all right, now I can gauge what you're feeling. I can, I can hear what you're saying or I can hear what you need, things like that. And I feel like a lot of us don't take time to listen. Or to go even a little further, I feel like we don't take enough time we just listen to hear, not listen to understand. So I feel like listening is uh is, is one of uh, the great underrated of today. I feel like listening is a skill. Um, that too, hearing yeah. and listening are two totally different things. What you're basically tackling is the problem, like people don't know how to have a conversation. When you have a conversation with mm-hmm. somebody, you actually listen to what it is that they're saying, and then you rebut, or not even rebut, then you reply to what it is that they say. You don't come mm-hmm. in with a preconceived notion, thought, of I'm saying this regardless to what it is that you're saying, that means that you didn't listen. Just like you said, exactly. somebody could be talking to you about their relationship situation and because my shit went the way that it went, I'm only telling you about the negative of the situation where you're telling me something that ain't really that deep. It might be a positive situation, but I can't relate because right. I'm not listening. It all goes back to just right. how much, yeah, how much are you paying attention? But it's a skill. It's not something that everybody's equipped with. It's like common sense. If common sense was common, then we'd all have it. 
that's why it's not that's why it's not just called sense it's called common sense everybody don't have it <laughs> right, the ability right. to affect like you say an effective listening we all don't have that ability and you must recognize if this person who you are bouncing this shit off of if this is your therapist of the moment for this situation then you need to know if they're a good listener that's what the person who you turn to as your listening ear or the person you get advice from but the person that you're going to lean on is because you know they're a good listener they listen then right. they apply to what it is that you said. They didn't just have preconceived thoughts. That's a huge difference between right. listening and hearing. For sure. Um, what you got now, going on? My number three, this one is dads. Dads mm. are so underrated. I'm so tired, so tired of hearing Super. it. As a mother, when girls just say like, as a mother or because I'm a mom or like you just don't get it because you're not a mom or like it's something that's I get it. Like these jobs are both extremely special. These titles are both extremely special. But the same way that I can't relate to you being a mom, you can't relate to me being a dad. Like, so I'm not looking to demean, belittle, or look down on your situation. But why are y'all always doing that to us? Like, people always say like a child has to have their mom. Like, so you don't need your dad. Like, yeah, whether we child living. Yeah, don't matter if it's a girl or a boy. Like, you need to have a sound parent. Two of them. Like. If you only got one, you need to have a sound parent, whichever one that might be. But like, let's stop downplaying the dads just because somebody else wasn't shit ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, because right. this didn't handle his responsibilities, don't put that on everybody else. Like, yeah, don't look at me and, and think I'm a uh, trash bag. <laughs> but even you know, if uh, Daquan did wrong, <laughs> even if Daquan is fucking up, like you also still need to have a strong male figure in this kid's life again girl or boy like you need to have an uncle a cousin or somebody grandpa somebody for them to aspire to look up to the same way as if the dad is raising these kids that you need to have a strong aunt sister cousin and a female for them to look up to you got to get it from both sides and every fucking father's day we go through somebody's posting a mom saying happy father's day i hate that shit nobody's doing that on mother's day so post my dad like Ain't completely so wrong. Like we got to stop belittling and demeaning dads and the fathers or the male figures because it don't make sense to me. It's like you need both. Everybody's not blessed to have both, and that's not saying that you can't be a prosperous individual because you didn't have both. But right. you also still need to have those figures, whether it be like I said, a male or a female. But like people always just telling you like as a mother or because it's the mom, like it means more than being the dad. Like it means the exact same shit that it does to be a dad that it means to be a mom. You know what I think too? On like piggybacking off of what you said, um, as you were talking, it made me think about old heads. We had old heads growing up. Old heads is kind of underrated now too. When you think about and it. Old like, heads is what's wrong with the world, man. Yeah, they're, either they in jail, the real old heads are in jail or they don't want to be bothered. And I say that from an aspect where it's like I got a bunch of young boys who I see because I still actively play basketball. So I see a lot of them on the court. Um, I talk to them. I mentor them. I try to be as much as an old head to them as I know how to be. But I know a lot of sometimes there's a lot of them, and I can understand with some of the ones who don't want to be bothered in a sense because um, I just I believe in just keep trying anyway. You can reach them one way or the other. Um, it hasn't been that difficult for me. However, I do see with some of them, like, they might approach it the wrong way and they don't know how to come at them. And when they do it, a lot of times they get the, oh, F out of here. Oh, and I ain't trying to hear that, you know, da, da, da. But it's like, I feel like the old heads is underrated as well because of things like that, where it's like you just push them off or a lot of the old heads have this preconceived notion like, oh, I'm going to mess with the young boys. All they want to do is tote guns and pop perks and da, da. It's like, nah, you really can't reach them today. You can. There's a way to do it. Um, the thing is about taking the extra step to do so um, with me is basketball and sneakers, which coincide with each other. And that's an easy way for me to reach them. But then a lot of times when I talk to a lot of them, a lot of them treat me as if like they revere me in a fatherly way. And sometimes it wears me out, honestly. But in the same token, I understand because I'm like the day of the, the old head, the OG, like is, is gone along with. The, the dads, like, we don't get that much respect or um, reverence. And I think it's mainly because of things like that, where it's just, we just undermine a lot. And I, I think it's sad, but yeah, I just wanted to add that on there as well. 
so shout out to my man Bella the Great, BTG. Me and him talked about this the last time he was on the podcast where we him. lost big we lost Big Mama. Big Mama we lost Dang. because your grand like that 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 grandmother is no longer here. Like Big Mama ain't no longer here. Big Mama met we walking past the house, we straightening up. We walking past the house, we know we're not cussing. We know like you know it's a yeah. certain way that you're gonna act when you see him or her or her. Yeah. Same thing with the old heads. We lost those old heads. Old heads told you, you can't come over here. This is not for you. He's over here because his literally. situation is way different than yours. Your mom right. is your mom and him working. You don't need to be doing this. He ain't got no mom. He's taking care of three siblings. He need to be mm-hmm. over here. Mm-hmm. Old heads structured everything. Old heads and big mom is how everything was structured. Now because you lost them two right. individuals, is how everything got fucked up. But again, like you said, that's a whole another episode. And you know what? You just you just named another underrate right there. Big Mama. Big Mama's underrated now. Heavy, because Big Mamas are extinct. Like yeah, you got either to that or they like uh, twenty six. <laughs> that's why I say yeah. But that's the same thing. If your old head is twenty six, he's not your old head. Yeah, like, you're not equipped like, for the bro, job. You're, you're a couple. Uh, you're a couple grades up. Further than me, a couple yeah, like, years. Yeah, like nigga, we, nigga, I was in ninth grade when you was in twelfth. How you my old head? Like, right. <laughs> but that's the just because you got the job don't mean that you're equipped for the job. You know what I'm saying niggas that's get hired every day for jobs that they're not ready for. People get thrust right. into positions and they ain't got a clue how to handle. Them. They don't know what's going on. How do I work this? How does this do this? Uh, yeah, like we, you know. Yeah, where does bracket C go? <laughs> now. Right. Uh, before we wrap this one up, you got anything on the cutting room floor that you was like, damn, I wanted to have this on my list, but I couldn't get it on there. Give me one or two. Um, okay, so... Um, Flip the page. He has 27 joints on the other side of this page. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can see that? So, um, one of the things I had noted down, I had to note it down, because my mind was going all over the place. One of the things that I think was, um, I'm going to give an honorable mention is, um, and this is couples related, but being completely lazy with a significant other. Um, no, I'm speak- don't. You don't think so? No, this is an episode. Don't go here. All right, well, all right. Oh. I'm be, all right, I'm. A, I'm a, we're gonna let that one. Let that. We're go good. Ahead. We're stopping um, right there on that one. That's an episode. Let me write that one down right now. Don't even tell all me right, that. Anymore. All right, can I give you another one? Another honorable yeah, mention. Yeah. Give me another right, one. I'm gonna get this one. Damn, as, I should have proof, uh, proofread these, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is why we're here. How to hustle podcast, man. Make sure y'all get ready for uh part two. We um, only accept five stars, not four. <laughs> exactly. Receiving and opening packages in the mail. I know this don't apply to everybody, but I know as somebody who's um I'm always busy a lot, I'm always working. Um, so I order a lot online. Um, a lot of times, it could be the biggest or the smallest thing I get. Um, I look in the mail. I mean, the first thing I look, I happen to see my name on it. I look at the, the paws of the size of the package, and I look, and I'm like, oh. I'm like, what's in here? Sometimes I order so much stuff that I, I don't remember, whether it's for business or personal. And I'm like, all right, what is this? For some weird reason, I get like a little thrill out of just popping that joint open, pop, 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 flipping them all back, taking them out the box. Unbox it and look, and I'm like, ah, uh, I think that's an un- underrated. Um, I thought you was right about there. to say, I thought you meant on the other side of the wall that I'm um, saying you getting the mail coming in. I thought oh, that's where you no. was about to take it. <laughs> we can speak on that too. You know, I can speak to that one too. Um, that is also <laughs> an underrated thing too. Now that we're there, thank you for giving me that. Um, that is an underrated thing too because I remember having a Shelly before who uh who had life. Um, he had nobody on the outside. And um, I used to be hyped because I got to the point where I was just getting mail like almost every day under this. Like, and um, I remember watching him, you know, feeling a way about it. He used to get mad. And I never could understand why, but I saw this like, you know, you, you don't exhibit that, that type of behavior for no reason. It's like, oh, it's on a simple fact that, and sometimes he used to slam it on my, uh, my hut, my, uh, my bump, he used to be like, yo, Sully, you got mail, I'll be sleep, dead sleep. And he like, yo, oh man, what is this? But then I remember popping up like, oh, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's that's an underrated niggas always, thing. Yeah, niggas always say you want to hear your name called. 
Um, yeah. All right, now, before we close out episode 117, let's go into the business. Since you know the CH1s, 2s, and 3s, you know what I'm saying? Well, we need to get those serviced. Where else will we take them but to my brother? Talk to us about the service and let them know, you know what I'm saying, where the page well, is, that good stuff. I am Solidified Side of Solidified Premium Cleaning. The Instagram is at G-E-T underscore Solidified. Solidified spelled S-O-L-E-L-I-D-I-F-I-E-D. Um, and uh, yeah, I do um, cleaning, restoration, minor repairs, shoe laundry, buy, sell, trade, a little bit of everything that you want to get into. I got it as far as shoes concerned. And um, Solidify Premium Cleaning is the only place where you can send any condition of any shoe. And I'm going to send them back to you back to new. With that being said, um, I've been in business um, for about a year now. Um, I have been doing it longer, but um, I just decided to recently do it. I got tired of working. Um, I'm still working. However, um, you know, I'm just working until this thing can be a full-time thing. Uh, so far, it has been good overall. Um, but what I can say about everything is, man, whatever your footwear needs are, Come to me, I make sure you're good. I ain't gonna kill you price wise. Um, you know, and make sure when you get them CH one to threes, you come to me after they done. I mean, get them taken care of, but make sure you go get the CH one to threes. Make sure, you know what I mean? Copy um, that. but yeah, that's it. Um, for me, honestly, I'm gonna just run through it real fast. All it has been is, um, you know, I service my own sneaks, I've been doing it for quite a while. I am what they call a sneakerhead, so to speak. I'm just getting into living into that term. Um, but what started me doing that thing was I was just trying to think, like, you know, you know where we from, bro. It's like we got to hustle. We got to always make sure. It's like one rev one stream of revenue isn't enough. So for Hell me, no. I battled with a long time with how is it that I could do something that I could just do effortlessly and um, make money doing it. But overall, I like to see uh, – this is something that's underrated as well. I like the feeling of uh, the feeling you get when you just the put fresh sneaks on. Yeah, you put your sneaks on and they look brand new. Um, I remember walking down the street plenty of times and it still happened. And somebody might see something where it's like, I wear a lot of old retros and um, things like that you might not see for a minute. And people are like, damn, boy, them joints nice. Where you get them from? And I'm like, oh, I had these about 10, 20 years. And they're like, nah, I know you did. And I'm like, nah, I'm serious. I had these they're like, man, you just kept them in the packages. Like, no, I clean them. I still wear them. I clean them. Advertisement and promotion. Damn, side joint cut out. You got to always be advertising and promoting your own situation if you got it. Anytime you see me anywhere, I'm in something that I own because you're a walking billboard for yourself. Bro, connection cut out on us. That was episode 117 of the Hot Hustle Podcast. I appreciate you coming on those side weeds.